What do you believe in? What do you got to fight for? Because we already have money now. Now it's all about now who are you? Now you're dealing with adversity. Who are you? What are you going to do now? You're going to lay down now and you say, hey, you got it. I don't want no more. Boxing has become everything, like my only thing. Like there is nothing else out there anymore. I give my life to this game, man. I give everything. Don't waste my time. I'm kind of stretched. I'll play the game till sudden death. It's a bad man. It's a bad man. I'm just going in. If I'm silent on man, it's still a warning. What do you think I'm going to do? Is to look for his chin. I got heat for the masses. Ruthless savage. Fuck around with the men in black. You might see flashes. Yes, I heard that he does have a chin. I don't know if it's true or not. We're going to find out. I hope I had an opportunity to test that out. That's my, that's my wish. In the majestic landscape of the Saudi Arabian desert, a clash of titans loomed large, heralding an epic showdown that breaks the realms of mixed martial arts and traditional boxing. A behemoth of the octagon. He's a freak. He's the freak of all freaks. Renowned for his unrivaled power and relentless aggression. Once the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion, he was known as the predator for his ferocious strikes and dominating hunter presence. The other, a seasoned veteran of the boxing ring, a former unified heavyweight champion whose name echoed through the annals of pugilistic history. With years of experience and a formidable reputation, also another powerhouse, known for his devastating punches and tactical prowess. The fighting of London, England, and once again, the heavyweight... was no walkover, right. you know? It's just that for some reason, I don't know, we expect a lot from Joshua for some reason. I want to push myself. This is what I do, so I live for. I'm ready for battle. I feel like I'm getting stronger, and I feel by the time the fight comes, I'll be at peak performance. Well, there's many ways I can beat in Gandhi. I grew up uh, enjoying boxing. I grew up uh, being a huge fan of boxing, wanted to become a boxer. I want Ngannou back. That's what I want. That's the champion. I mean, dude. That's the champion. Fuck. And that guy, he relinquished his crown. And what he did with Tyson Fury, one of the greatest performances in combat sports history. Ever. Ever. Right? Ever, yes. ever. Ever. Yeah. To have that guy go over there with, no one gave him any chance. If I land a punch, a knockout will happen. You know, I just think of what I've been through, how I get here. Bro, you have to kill me. You know, I'm not coming there to play with you. I'm coming there to fight. But I'm not fighting you, I'm fighting my life. I'm fighting whatever is wrong in my life. In terms of resumes, Anthony Joshua stands out as the dominator and favored contender, given his extensive experience and seasoned skills in the boxing ring. However, Ngannou's performance was nothing short of extraordinary, as he delivered a stunning display by overpowering the heavyweight champion, Tyson Fury, and even sending him to the canvas. I'm confident that I won that fight. I wasn't surprised. For what happened. I knew that he would have happened. Hey, listen man, I'm a I'm alone in this game. I just moved from another sport, come here, and then there is a structure, solid business, establish established business for people, and then you just come to rob that. You know, imagine that I would have walked out there with that belt or with him being defeated for the first time and then what would I look for him? What would I look for all the people that are associated in his business? I, I know. I knew it wasn't going to happen. Split decision! Split decision. decision! The Gypsy King, Tyson Fury! Uh, those uh, judges should be accountable for, that, for their responsibility. And this is not only the first thing that I found that uh, in this boxing world that it's kind of like uh, shitty stuff here that uh, we're going to point it out. I mean, I don't care whatever anybody say, what they do here. Uh, I'm just going to kick into that nest and uh, expose that shit out. Many men wish death upon me. Blood in my dog and I can't see. I'm trying to be what I'm destined to be. And trying to take my life away. 
he said he'd knock you out. He, I mean, this is what he, he said. said he, what? He said he'd knock you out. Well, but, but even Tyson Fury said the same thing, and Tyson Fury is better than Anthony Joshua. So what do I care about what people say? You heard that, Anthony? He said, you heard what he said? He made Tyson Fury look quite ordinary. He's just told us that he's going to make you look really ordinary. Let's what say. do you think? I feel like it's, it's always easier said than done. My last opponent, um, this, I'm um, that, and the other, I broke his eye socket and broke his nose and sent him packing after five rounds. So you can say what you want to say, but when Lever starts landing, I think people do rethink about their approach. But like anything, I think it's going to be a challenging fight. So in my head, I'm taking myself to a place where I know if it gets tough and if it gets rough, I'm ready, like, I, and that will lead me to victory for sure. So, and I've got many ways I can skin a cat as well. There's many ways I can beat Ngandu. But I just want to make sure that, you know, as he's done to Fury, if it does get tough, that I'll be ready for whatever comes my way. Francis Ngano made that much of an impression over there with the knockdown over Tyson Fury. Francis Ngano, he knows, you know, just needs one shot. If he lands that shot, um, AJ is a, um, a thing that if he gets hit, he stays hit. Tyson Fury might get hit, but he gets up and gets, gets thumbs up off the floor and, and wins. So. Francis Ngano is usually motivated by that, and we'll see um, how AJ handles it. It's all in here, it's where you are here. If you're still that same fighter in your mind, even though people say you're not as good as you used to be, if you still believe it somewhere in here, you can claw something out of you. And in a fight, when you need to claw that out of you, you'll have it. Especially a fighter like me, where people really want to beat me. They don't just want to win, they want to beat me. With Joshua at 34 years old and Ngannou at 37, youth appears to be on Joshua's side. However, Ngannou's advantage lies in his unpredictable style, lacking a set pattern for opponents to exploit. Joshua may opt to keep Ngannou at arm's length, controlling the fight's distance and potentially aiming for a late knockout or securing a decision victory. This approach aligns with Joshua's tactics from Ruiz 2 to last summer. You can't write and Garno off. He proved that against Tyson. He has got power. You know, he's a strong kid. He's built. And if he comes wanting to win, if he comes with desire and determination, he's a problem for any heavyweight in the world. It's a very dangerous fight. I mean, on so many levels. Number one, you're expected to beat Francis Ngarno. Number two, he's very dangerous. He hits very hard. He's very, very strong. I do know one thing. If Ngarno tags AJ, he'll not recover so quick. And hopefully AJ can deal with Ngannou, but it's a dangerous fight, a huge fight. You're going to see these two giants next to each other, both carved out of stone, both punch like mules. It's a really, really explosive heavyweight matchup. France is even more impressive, right? Because he's natural. I mean, he's not even barely lifting weights. I mean, that guy's just huge. a fucking That's crazy. gigantic super athlete. <laughs> So that guy doesn't really lift? No. It's Dude, huge. He got that big from working in a fucking sand mine. Oh my god. While Nganu may be a newcomer to boxing, his overall fighting experience makes him an exceptionally dangerous opponent, particularly when the fight remains on its feet. His enduring power, even when fatigued, coupled with a granite chin, provides him with a significant advantage in combat sports. Possessing such attributes can be likened to a cheat code, allowing him to operate with a confidence that sets him apart from others, regardless of their skill level. What's been the best part about training with Mike Tyson? Anything he's animated, he's streaming. I'm in. Francis Ngannou. Yeah. Yeah. They fucked him. But they didn't, because the world saw it. Yeah. Like you could write all the bullshit you want in terms of scorecards. The fucking world, including boxers, all the boxers that were there said that he should have the won. The movement that he had made from Cameroon into Morocco, I've traversed multiple times. It is hellacious. I mean, it is like the most unforgiving terrain with radical groups, with property owners, like water to water trying to travel. The water's controlled by warlords. So his story is just like so inspiring. It's incredible. It's a comic book story. It's like an origin story in a movie that yeah. you wouldn't believe. Many boxing fans overlook physical attributes, dismissing fighters like Ngannou due to their novice boxing status. Yeah, like Ngannou is a one-trick pony. And do you not think credible that, that Francis Ngannou and the way that he performs against Tyson Fury 
makes this fight an interesting fight. I maintain the view, unless you're going to dissuade me of it, that these fighters, what they say they are, they're the best in the, they're the, the, the you know, on, on what their records suggest that they are, which is yeah. the cream of the crop, the top of their fields, right? And they should make moderately light work of an MMA fighter. The intriguing element in this matchup is Nganu's demonstration of power against Fury, a boxer renowned for his resilient chin. I believe that he'll go in there and he'll deal with Nganu. I don't think he'll blast him out, mm -hmm. but I think he'll deal with him as a leading heavyweight should deal with a potential novice. Do I like the fight? Yeah, I do. And the reason I like the fight is because of the way Francis Ngannou handled himself against Tyson Fury. A lot of people felt that he'd even won that fight. He proved that he was more than capable of competing at that level. So I think it's a decent fight. He gave Tyson Fury... Tyson Fury had kittens in, in that fight there. He had, a, he had a life or death struggle. When I fight someone, is to break their spirit and take their soul. You have to take someone's soul, you have to take their spirit. Is it possible to do that to you after the life you've lived and the journey you've been on? They say never say never. Nothing is impossible. We don't know the strength of uh, Anthony Joshua, but uh, even though I don't believe he has that strength, but we're going to find out. The way he could um, make it more effective is to put a lot of pressure on him. That's what he's going to have to do. Francis will have to put a lot of pressure on him. God bless me, guide me, protect me. Come feeling like AJ Wembley. I get active, I've been back to it's on camera. They just act when it's on camera. I ain't never gave nobody a problem who didn't want it. What is it now? If I was to ask you that question now. I got mental scars from this shit, but we're living off it. It hits a little different when you're coming from it. They probably come across it and then double cross it. It's because I have a passion to keep on improving. There's something that I'm like. The struggle that's what made you why you're running from. He had more belts than anyone, and the number one heavyweight in the world. Ambition like mine, let me know when you come across it. I, I give my life to this game, man. I give everything. I swear to you, I give a lot. There's just something in me that keeps on telling myself, like, what happens when I win, I become champion. And it's like that quest for, for perfection. Three defeats. Yeah, you only get credit for winning. And it's like, and what I, and what I gave wasn't enough. Which one hurt the most? Usyk too, yeah. Mm. Massively. It was a weak performance by me. I think so. I wasn't supposed to lose in my head. Everybody in the country knows who he is. Everybody's got an opinion of who he is. He's in the gym all the time. He's given his whole life since he started to the sport of boxing. There isn't anyone I know that's more dedicated to the sport than him. You don't get the credit. No, but it, I'll, I'm gonna give you the credit. Because at the end of the day, you've had to step up to carry the sport in our country. It's true. Ngannou's seemingly titanium-like head, evident from his UFC performances, adds an extra layer of uncertainty, as he has rarely shown signs of being wobbled or shaken in the heat of battle. Joshua has shown vulnerability to being hurt on multiple occasions. This raises the stakes significantly, as one powerful punch from Nganu could potentially bring the fight to an abrupt end. Holy Bro, you have to kill me. You know, I'm not coming there to play with you. I'm coming there to fight. But I'm not fighting you, I'm fighting my life. I'm fighting whatever is wrong in my life. I left Cameroon, from Cameroon yeah. out to Nigeria, yeah. hiding for the cops, trying to cross the border. It was the most scary thing ever. And then get to Algeria, the Sahara Desert, so cross the desert, get to Morocco. They are protected by fans and uh, guard, armed guard. So if you get in that perimeter, trying to cross the continent to go to Europe, Nganu winning the respect and admiration of boxing fans across the globe with a remarkable performance. Now, in what will be his second professional fight, Nganu takes on the other most popular heavyweight on the planet.